As we close lecture 35 about L'Hopital's rule, there's one more indeterminate form that we need to talk about, and this is the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity, which this one's sort of an oddball, which is why I left it towards the end. Now, the good news is infinity minus infinity, I would say, is not as hard as those exponential indeterminate forms that we talked about previously. Uh, the, the bad news is that there's not going to be a sort of a general strategy. Uh, we're going to use more of an ad hoc strategy, meaning that the way we approach it will depend on the problem we have. There's not a one size fit all strategy. Uh, this is the basic idea. Uh, if you have infinity minus infinity, that is you have the limit as X approaches A of F of X, that's infinite. And the limit of G is also infinite. If you take the limit as X approaches A of F minus G, that's an indeterminate form. We have to somehow convert it into a quotient. And that's basically the strategy. Uh, if you have infinity minus infinity, you have to somehow turn your difference into a quotient. And that depends on the nature of the function. Like, for example, if we want to compute the limit as x approaches pi halves from the left of secant x minus tangent x, what happens there? If we just plugged in pi over 2 there, this would look like secant uh, pi over 2 from the left minus tangent uh, pi over 2. Now, if you forget what those are, you could try to compute it without your calculator. You'd probably switch it into some fraction, like, oh, secant is 1 over cosine, so you get 1 over cosine of pi over 2 from the left minus sine of pi over 2 from the left over cosine of pi over 2 from the left, in which case, then when you think about it, like sine of pi over 2, why did I write a square? That should, that should just be from the left, sorry. What's sine of pi over 2? Well, think about your, your unit circle diagram. Sine should be 1. Cosine is equal to 0. Oh, okay. So that's, and that's, we're approaching 0 from, from above. So this should look like 1 over 0 plus minus 1 over 0 plus. So this becomes exactly infinity minus infinity. Yowzers. So that's this indeterminate form. But it turns out my process of trying to compute what those things are actually shows exactly what we need to do. We can turn this into a fraction by using trigonometric identities. For example, secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. And tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine, which this is a common denominator. And so we can add them together, or in this case, subtract, I should say. Since the denominator is cosine, we're going to end up with 1 minus sine of x over cosine of x, for which then you can check that as x goes to pi halves, you're going to end up with 1 minus 1 over 0. So 1 minus 1 over 0, that is 0 over 0. This is a situation where L'Hopital's rule applies. So we'll take the derivative of the top versus the derivative of the bottom, in which case we're going to get, well, the derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative sine will be a negative cosine of x. The derivative of cosine will be a negative sine of x. Take the limit here as x approaches pi halves. And now plug in pi halves. You're going to see what happens. You're going to get negative cosine of pi halves over sine, negative sine, I should say, of pi halves. Cosine of pi halves, like we observed earlier, is 0. Sine of pi halves is 1. So you get negative 0 of negative 1. This is the same thing as 0. And so by we, if we can turn the difference, infinity minus infinity, into a quotient, like it'll become something like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and that helps us then compute uh, the limit here using L'Hopital's rules. So in summary, turn your difference in determinate form into a quotient in determinate form, which usually isn't so bad. Um, like here with the trigonometric functions, we use trigonometric identities. Um, other times, we can do some type of factorization or rationalizing denominators with conjugates, things like that. That often will take care of it for you. So just turn your difference into a quotient and that'll take care of it. And so we've now studied the various different types of indeterminate forms one typically runs across in a uh, calculus one setting. And we can resolve nearly all of these using L'Hopital's rule.